YouTube famous chef Wang Gan is the latest to face the CCP regime's brainwashed horde of public opinion. His fried rice video is sensitive to the regime. Let's talk about it. And the white garb COVID guards are back. We'll do an update on the current situation around the mysterious disease in China. So be sure to stick around until the end for the latest information. Welcome to China Insider, I'm David Zhang. This is Chef Wang Gang. You must have seen his videos of Chinese cooking. He's got a straightforward style of cooking Sichuan and Chinese cuisine while using his master wok skills and concise summaries. I, like many, started watching him during the pandemic, and this was quite early when he started to upload to YouTube. He's got fans from multiple languages, and everyone's simply stunned because he's able to do the no-fluff uh, cooking skills that people enjoy, showing off real authentic Chinese recipes and people simply want to learn how to cook from him. Now, like many, we found his videos to be entertaining because he's simply trying to pass off uh, his skills to and share with everyone around the world. And uh, sometimes I wanted a bomb fried rice recipe. And guess what? This man can cook it. Well, he's the latest influencer to become the target of Chinese pro-communist witch hunt, or as the internet calls it, the stepped on a sensitive mind. On November 27th, Wang Gan uploaded an egg fried rice video to Chinese video platform Billy Billy, and then he published a status on it, just two days after the anniversary of the death of Mao Anying, who is Mao Zedong's son. Now, he then was called a bad person for doing this and garnered huge backlash on Chinese social media. And the reason is this, Mao Anying died on November 25th, 1950, and get this, he was hiding from American forces during the Korean War, but because he got hungry, he started cooking with fire, which is a big no-no if you're trying to hide from enemy sites, allegedly fried rice. And that smoke became visible, which became the target of bombing at that location. And of course, Mao Anying died in the process. So each year, there's a sensitive period around this time. And for three years, Chef Wang Gan has posted a fried rice video around this time. Now, I think it's a coincidence, but not to those people. In response to the accusations by internet users, Wang Gan said that he's simply trying to share a meal recipe. In his latest video, he publicly apologized for his behavior and says that he will never make another fried rice video or make fried rice again. Shocking. And that says the employee who posted this on his behalf, uh, which I believe, he probably hired people who have no idea, who aren't taught about Mao Anying's death his stupidity that led to his death, and so they have no idea why this date is even sensitive to begin with. Wang Gan on the video also then bowed and said multiple times that he was sorry for this incident, that he should have known better. Uh, if we check his video posting record on Chinese platform Billy Billy, we can actually see that he's done fried rice videos around the year, so not just around this time. In fact, I suggest that Wang Gan, instead of cooking fried rice around this time, or not cooking again, Wang Gan should be cooking fried rice every single month from now on. That way he's never seen as problematic when it comes to fried rice. It's clear a witch hunt, and the political sensitivity is at an all-time high in China. Wang Gun's videos have been a strong Chinese soft power on YouTube. In fact, it is presenting the Chinese culture and its cooking in a very positive manner. So it's used by the regime to paint light onto its own face. And the CCP has benefited from this. But guess what? He's fallen to the CCP's own red soldiers behaviors and attacks. It's almost like people are looking for the stupidest things to be mad about in China. Now, Wang Gong wasn't, wasn't the only one who has done this, uh, tripped on the similar case with the egg situation. Back in 2019, People's Daily, a Chinese state media, had published a steamed egg recipe video around this time too, November 25th. And that, of course, drew a huge backlash and was deleted very soon. Only in a crazy country with people associate posting a fried rice video being related to some dude who died because of his own stupidity in 1950. But of course, this is China we're talking about. Now, before we go on to talk more about the craziness, here is our sponsorship segment. Do you suffer from stress and anxiety because of work? Are you tired after a long day of using your brain? It happens to me all the time after writing scripts, filming, and then editing all by myself. Now, I want to introduce you to Puritan Black Jensen Extract. Puritan's Black Ginseng helps to regulate blood sugar, improve brain functions, overall health, and immunity. It's also anti-cancer. It can be consumed by anyone, including children. Now, for me, after about a week of drinking Black Ginseng, I feel an overall improvement in both logic and memory. I'm able to organize my thoughts much better, remember and recall different things. 
Right now, with the holiday approaching, not only is this great for yourself, but it's a great gift for those that you care and love, including for those that are worrying about their health. Puritan's Black Ginseng is made through a process of steaming and drying nine times, and this actually unlocks the active ingredients and boosts absorptions. Ginsenoside RG3, which boosts immunity and helps prevent cancer, is about eight times higher in Puritan's Black Ginseng compared to regular red ginseng. The human body can also absorb more than 80% of the ginsenosides in Black Ginseng, which is six times that of red ginseng. Now, ginseng that's used to make black ginseng extract from Puritan comes from Korea. It's a six-year-old Korean ginseng, handmade without additives. So head to my link in the description and get the gift of the lifetime for those that you love and cherish. So get your Puritan black ginseng extract today. Enter code DZ2023 for free shipping worldwide. All right, back to the video. Now, if you remember Austin Lee, China's lipstick king, around June 4th last year, he was live streaming and selling ice cream cakes. It just happens that these ice cream cakes look like tanks, which is extremely sensitive to show on June 4th. Uh, of course, it suggests that June 4th, 1989, something happened. Now, Lee's live stream was quickly cut and he disappeared for three months. Many were saying how Austin and his team weren't even aware of it, simply because guess what? The CCP said nothing happened in Tiananmen Square on June 4th, 1989. So how can they expect these young kids who are now influencers or working for an influencer to know all about the sensitive dates in China? In fact, making dates sensitive themselves, this is actually a backfiring approach. Why? Because once you cause a scene over something like this fried rice incident or something similar with the situations, people are gonna start looking and wondering why that this date is sensitive to begin with and why that they're getting in trouble or stepping on minds over this. So it ends up being a history lesson for many people who were lied to by the regime, either saying that things didn't happen or happened in a different way. And they now get an opportunity to learn about it. In fact, Wang Gan stepping on the mine is the most perfect embodiment of their unsuccessful brainwashing. The CCP invested so much in controlling public opinion, making people ignorant to facts and only listen to the, what the uh, regime has to tell them. But to be a good communist in China or a good socialist, you have to know what's sensitive, what's not. By that very idea, if everyone is equipped with a faux set of taboo topics, well, to of course, to avoid all those sensitive days, terms, and actions, that means that everyone must know everything about the regime and its history. Of course, which is they're desperately trying to hide it. So I suggest that the CCP ban egg fried rice every year after October. After all, October is when Mao Anying was born, November is his death anniversary, and December is Mao Zedong's birthday. All three months should be uh, sensitive to fried rice. Wow. There are even comments suggesting now that Wang Gang go confess his double agent identity to the police because his YouTube videos, after all, are all watched by Westerners, commenting by Westerners, and they're probably uh, somehow related to national security. They're basically saying Wang Gang, a chef with a honest upbringing in China is a spy sent by the United States consulate in Chengdu to influence Chinese people. And let's talk about this. A chef apparently is powerful enough to topple a regime because he made a fried rice video? What does that say about the CCP? Aren't they a little too fragile? The fact that people who are pro-CCP are triggered over this, which by those comments seems to be a lot, suggests that the CCP's overall brainwashing, the cognitive manifestations, they've turned people into fragile, sensitive monsters. Wang Gang himself is probably not even politically educated on this matter. Like I said, he had a pretty poor upbringing in, in the idea that he didn't have a lot of, he wasn't from a rich family. He only saw his parents a few times when he was younger and he was raised by his uncle, who uh, often you see appear on videos with him. He went out and learned cooking from chefs and worked in different restaurants. And then he became a head chef at a pretty young age. After a while, he used his savings to buy camera gear and to rent a small studio. That's where he first made those videos in the kitchen. This man isn't flashy, yet he gained fame and that's purely through his hard work with his cooking skills. Now Wang Gang has a business around his cooking videos and even that, he appeared on Chinese uh, television. Still, he's that same family-oriented man as he was before. Wang Gang's current situation is honestly the inevitable result of the extreme radicalism of the CCP, where no matter how safe you are, how educated you could be, my, you could be cooking, you could be drinking water, you could be eating the wrong way or blinking too much. If you happen to do that, on a random date that you might not even have an idea about. You could be in political jail or public opinion jail in China. 
Now, let's do an update for our second part on the mystery disease in China. As a viewer suggested, I should do a daily segment on the situation in China so that we're all more informed about it. Uh, I thought it was a great idea, so we'll do these pretty often, and as of course, as new information pop up. First of all, the dreaded white garb COVID guards are back in business after a year that the, when they became jobless last November, a new mysterious disease has apparently rejuvenated this draconian COVID business. Now in this video, they're seen spraying chemicals in classrooms and gathering around, where hearing that Beijing is preparing to go into lockdown modes where the latest outbreak targets mainly children who experience fever, coughs, high temperature, and much more, along with the police who are dressed in all black. They're uh, being collectively called the black and white impermanence. Yep, the Chinese ghost reapers. At the same time, quarantine camps are being restarted in Beijing, so we're watching if lockdowns will be announced and enacted once again in China. This comes as China State Council issued a document saying that this winter and next spring, China may face a superimposed pandemic situation of multiple respiratory diseases. Wow. Now, the most evil thing the CCP is doing now is allowing six countries to travel to China visa-free. So French, German, Italian, Dutch, Spanish, and Malaysian citizens will be allowed to enter without a visa from 1st of December 2023 until 30th of November 2024. Nationals of these countries are allowed to visit China for up to 15 days for business or leisure without obtaining a visa, which to me sounds like enough time for them to carry whatever is in China right now back to their home country. Think about it. Why would the state council release a total warning about this next two seasons being extremely bad? and then less than 10 minutes later, released a new policy on visa-free traveling for six countries that get access to the rest of the world. Does that sound familiar to you? Yep, just like the early days of 2020 when China didn't tell us about the COVID outbreaks, still allowed international flights out of China to around the world. And then within a short span of time, COVID was everywhere. So they're evil. They're doing the same thing again. This makes the trip from Xi Jinping to San Francisco honestly so suspicious. Was she already aware of the situation in China? As we know, this new mysterious disease uh, started to take shape in October, way before Xi Jinping's APEC trip. And after all, he agreed with Biden to increase traveling to China and from the United States. Now, according to information obtained by Jennifer Zhang, a Chinese military personnel tested positive for five different diseases at the same time. On his medical report, it shows he was positive for influenza A, mycoplasma pneumonia, which is currently being touted as the main culprit by the regime of this outbreak. He, he was also tested positive for the respiratory syncytial virus, the adenovirus, and Coxsackie virus. Hope I pronounced that right. Uh, he was also tested for the three following viruses, but they were negative. There's influenza B, parainfluenza virus, and clemmadophila pneumonia. Uh, I'm probably butchering some of these, but uh, you get the point. So now you might be wondering, why wasn't COVID-19 tested? Well, basically because Xi Jinping said to downplay COVID, even the doctors, even if this symptom wise or diagnostic wise, it's COVID, they're not allowed to say it and they're not allowed to prescribe medicine to treat it. In a group chat I obtained, many people were describing that they were having different symptoms. Some were having fevers, chills, coughs, or a combination of all of these. And uh, when they went to the doctors, they were being told different things, but the diagnose they all skipped COVID-19 being the possible reason. It's very likely that this wave is a jumble mixture of all sorts of different things. But as we know, the problem is the regime's lack of transparency in the process. Even as the WHO and ProMed both requested more information to be made public, we're still being left out in the dark. So who knows exactly what's really going on in there? It could be a new virus too. The biggest difference between this wave and the past three and a half years for the COVID-19 pandemic is that other than additional to adults and older populations being infected, a large number of children in China have also been infected one after another. The children have reached the point where they need to wash their lungs and some children have died. However, the Chinese Communist Party has tried its best to conceal the nature of this and continues to suppress the truth. So the big problem right now is that the children who are being brainwashed in the schools by the CCP, they're being harmed by the regime's cover up of medical truth, yet they do not know about that. They're still told to believe that the party is for their safety and the st still believe that somehow the regime, although they're literally killing them by not telling them what's going on through the mouth of teachers and videos, they're doing these things that are basically killing the children and then saying we're still doing you a favor. That's so crazy. So I think it's on everyone else to help spread the awareness at least that this new wave hits children very hard and that we need to be vigilant if that spreads globally. 
All right, that's it today for the episode on the chef Wang Gan and him being censored in China. If you enjoy the content, leave a like, comment below your thoughts, and subscribe to our channel. All right, until next time, bye-bye.